If you don't mind and it's alright with you, I'm going to read to you The Rape of the Lock Introduction. It is the greatest poem of all time, per some scholars. What do I know? I didn't write this book, but this dude, I relate to him quite a bit. Anyway, here it goes. To Miss Arabella for more. Madame, it would be in vain to deny that I have some regard for this piece, since I dedicate it to you. Yet you may bear me witness. It was only intended to divert a few young ladies who have good sense and good humor enough to laugh not only at their sex's little unguarded follies, but at their own. But it was communicated with the air of a secret. It soon found its way into the world, an imperfect copy having been offered to a bookseller. You had the good nature, for my sake, to consent to the publication of one more correct. I made a copy. This is the introduction of The Rape of the Lock. That's where I had to stop my last video because I was trying to show this off. So I signed it with a copy of my signature. So I thought that was kind of cool. But yeah, beautiful poem. It's very meaningful. It took me several weeks to, to just get through the introduction. And yet I have still not accomplished going deeply into the actual poem itself. Uh, anyway, I'll get back to this. Put this away. I'll show off all my artworks later in other videos, shorts. This I was forced to before I had executed half my design, for the machinery was entirely wanting to complete it. The machinery, madame? is a term invented by the critics to signify that part which the deities, angels, and demons, or demons, are made to act in a poem. For the ancient poets are in one respect like many modern ladies. Let an action never Let an action be never so trivial in itself, they always make it appear of the utmost importance. These machines I determined to raise on a very new and odd foundation, the Rastrocrucian Doctrine of Spirits. <clears throat> I know how disagreeable it is to make use of hard words before a lady, but it is so much the concern of a poet to have his works understood and particularly by your sex, that you must give me leave to explain two or three difficult terms. The Rastrocrucians are a people I must bring you acquainted with. The best account I know of them is in a French book called Le Comte de Gabalis which both in its title and size is so like a novel that many of the fair sex have read it for one by mistake. And this is why I spent so much time going through this over and over and over again. <clears throat> Anywho, according to these gentlemen, the four elements are inhabited by spirits, which they call sylphs, gnomes, nymphs, and salamanders. The gnomes are demons of the earth, delight in mischief. But the sylphs, whose habitation is in the air, are the best conditioned creatures imaginable. For they say any mortals may enjoy the most intimate familiarities with these gentle spirits upon a condition very easy to all true adepts and involatile preservation of chastity. As to the following cantos, all the passages of them 
are as fabulous as the vision at the beginning. Again, reason why it took so long to go through this. Or the transformation at the end. Except the loss of your hair, which I always mention with reverence. The human persons are as fictitious as the airy ones, and the character of Belinda, as it is now managed, resembles you in nothing but in beauty. If this poem had as many graces as there are in your person or in your mind, yet I could never hope it should pass through the world half so uncensored as you have done. But let its fortune be what it will, mine is happy enough to have given me this occasion of assuring you that I am with the truest esteem, Madame, your most obedient, humble servant, Alexander Pope. Born about 298 years before me, two months, something like 10 days. He had a rough life. So did I. He was, I can't really relate to this, but he was a Christian or Catholic in London where they were all Protestant. And he could have achieved so much more if he would have just changed to being a Protestant. But he didn't. He remained a devout Catholic. And by the time he reached his fortune, uh, like 30 years old or so, from his first publication, he uh, lived in the outskirts of London <clears throat> and had famous people coming to his house. And he had the beef with... Uh, the, the madame at the beginning of the poem. <laughs> the Arabella for more. Which he kind of dedicated the poem to. But it's very beautiful. Very nice to have some understanding. Alright, ciao. I'm going to read it again another time.